a passion for what you're doing. This rings true because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard, and you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, and if you're not having fun doing it, you're gonna give up. Welcome to another episode of John's Entitled Podcast, a partner of MoshPitNation.com. This week's guest, it's a big one. It's fucking Chuck Billy. Daniel Terry, how the fuck are you doing? And Chuck fucking Billy. Oh my god, Chuck fucking Billy. And I'm doing great because I just talked to Chuck fucking Billy and you from know fucking Testament. And uh, that is also his t- Twitter and Instagram handles as well. We'll go ahead and get that out of the way. In case you didn't know that he is Chuck fucking Billy, he t- he wants you to know that when you when you search him out because he is. But uh, no, it was it was a really it was fun getting to chat with Chuck. Uh, you know they're currently out on the last farewell Slayer tour. Uh, I saw it last night, and you are going to see it tomorrow. Yes, I am. And, Hopefully. Uh, Hopefully you get there early <laughs> enough to go see them and uh, Napalm Death. Yeah, I already told the boss. I was like, look, man, you know, it's nothing personal, but this is, you know, kind of a dream tour for me. You know, I'm super stoked about Napalm Death. Obviously stoked about Testament. Um, super stoked about Slayer, clearly. Lamb of God. Um, Anthrax can suck a bag of dicks. Uh, but beyond that, um, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to be going going there and i'm probably planning on essentially being dead on friday morning so <laughs> uh i'll probably i'll probably lose about 60 pounds just at that just at that concert so yeah i read the local review of the show and it was pretty pretty positive for for most of the bands on the bill uh however when it came to lamb of god the dude was just like oh they're a, a one-dimensional thrash band uh sound randy has you know, not a very good voice and all this kind of stuff. I was like, wow, that's pretty interesting that that's how you feel about them considering. I mean, honestly, you could almost say like, while everyone does something a little differently as a whole, I, I do kind of feel like sometimes like the, the problem started with that show is like, to me, I, I'm going to go ahead and say it and everyone can fucking get mad at me all they want. But you want to talk about a one trick pony. That's that's, a, you know, Slayer thing for me. But I mean, like I said, when you have pretty much one dude writing the majority of the songs, it's kind of no wonder that they all sound the same. Yeah, I mean, Slayer definitely a one trick pony. I like it because there's a certain Slayer factor to it, and I don't know what <laughs> what the deal is. Uh, it's not a good argument. Like, I mean, it, it's uh, I remember going through their whole discography and and us sitting there being like, "What do you want me to say? It's another Slayer record, you know? Like, you can't really criticize it for being different from the other ones." Uh, with a couple of exceptions, but I mean, even even bands like uh, like Napalm Death is also an, an example of that. In that, you know, kind of just been doing the same shit for years, you know, <laughs> for decades. I mean, it for me and for I mean, it was interesting because it's like, yeah, if you listen to to the early Lamb of God stuff that they they obviously play, you know, I feel like they kind of have more more different songs. Especially when they start playing, you know, like, you know, five twelve and, and stuff like that. But I mean, it's like I feel like they were the the most diverse out of everything I saw last night. And 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 you I, know, I don't know if that's just me being a Lamb of God fan, but it's like I like Anthrax. But I mean, that still to me is sort of very in the same vein of like you know they have their kind of pattern. Now, if they would have had like John Bush, I would have and played John Bush era stuff. I would have said this band has more diversity because. They were just a different band when they had John Bush in the in the in the lineup. Yeah, I mean that's definitely true. Like, and it's weird because like I, when I texted you earlier uh, before you went to the show, I was like, it's kind of weird the Lamb of God's playing right before Slayer, and if, and you were like, well, why is that weird? Uh, and the reason I think it's weird is just because it's generally it's generationally different. You know, you're taking you're taking old school thrash bands, and even Napalm Death I think can still fit in that old school. Uh, thing because they were doing grindcore when all the thrash bands were popular, you know, um, so that they, they like they've been around, but it's kind of weird to throw a band like Lamb of God that sounds very modern, uh, in with all these bands that have not been modern since 1983. Um, 
I just thought that that was kind of a bizarre, like, I, I figured that there would be a little bit of blowback there that a lot of people would be like, God, I gotta wait. Now I gotta sit through this fucking new band, Lamb of God, before I can get to Slayer. The interesting thing to me and what I said last night to some friends who, and even in that review that I was talking about, they were like, oh, this would have been a good spot for, I don't remember the band he suggested, but there was a band he suggested that was also in that same vein. And it was one of those things to me, like I was making the comment to my friends about how basically when you, and maybe and we'll have to talk about this after you go to the show tomorrow, but I made the comment. I was like, when watching Lamb of God and seeing the reaction they got, it honestly felt like a Lamb of God show. And the interesting thing too, and like I said to my friends, is I go, Lamb of God's basically at this pseudo like smaller arena level, like this, you know, probably 12,000 seats, whatever, get them on a pretty decent package tour. But they could, in, for all intents and purposes, they, they're, they're at this level basically now. And that, that was pretty interesting to kind of, you know, looking back at how, you know, how often I've seen that band over the years, it's kind of been crazy to see like, wow, they, they really are, a band at this caliber now and it's almost you know i think the thing too that was interesting to me was trying to think of you know if you if you did something like you're saying and you grab someone else from that that same era does it have the same drawing potential as having a de facto headliner on their own that's probably good for you know two thousand people on their own at least no not even close and and the thing is is it like because, I mean, obviously the most natural band that could have been on that tour that would have fit with everything else and had been a nice little package deal would have been Exodus. Yeah. You know, that would have been they would have been the perfect band to throw on there. But that's just coming from an old school thrash fan. But it would have says, been well, hard to Exodus... do that when you have Bo Staff and you have Gary Holt in playing later on. I mean, ban- ban- bands have done it. So, I mean, it's... I was going to say it's fine. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> uh, don't worry about it because we're talking fantasy here. Uh, but uh, fantasy metal, that's what we should start the new fantasy metal booking, like instead of fantasy football. Uh, and then we actually, you know, we get those tours put, put together and we see who earned more, you know? Uh, <laughs> so you, you and I could be passing bets on PayPal. Uh, but, uh, no, it was, uh, but you know, like Exodus would have made the most sense. Tour probably wouldn't have sold nearly as well. Uh, Lamb of God really sounded to me like they were going to be, it's almost like a backup plan. You're like, well, all these people in these towns are going to go see a Lamb of God. And I think everybody, to a certain extent, like collectively, I think most people that are into metal at least appreciate Slayer or at least get sucked in by the hype. Like, oh, my God, it's fucking Slayer, you know. Um, like me personally, the biggest draw for me was Testament Napalm Death for the whole for the whole thing, because I'd never seen Napalm Death live um and uh, i'd never seen testament live so and th- those are two bands that i cared about a lot and you know having slayer on is kind of a bonus but like i'm gonna tell you if i get if I, somebody beats the shit out of me before slayer comes on i might be going home early you know um <laughs> if i don't if i don't die with the first three bands i'm definitely you know probably not going to make it through lamb of god if i'm already tired you know <laughs> so a lot of winded dudes a lot of winded pits and i was like that's about what i expected <laughs> yeah absolutely so i mean I totally get it, but from an old school thrash fan, which I mean, it seems like this tour had to have been put together by old school thrash fans. You know, they sat down and, you know, figured out who'd be the best for it. But uh, Exodus would have made more sense, but Lamb of God makes more sense money wise. I think if you were going to, to me, and, and we'll kind of wrap this up and get into our conversation with Chuck Billy, but I think to me, the, the band that would have made the most sense, I think for what you're saying, that still has that big name value like a Lamb of God honestly would have been a Megadeth. Megadeth or Metallica, and I guarantee neither one of them would have done it. I think Megadeth, much higher chance uh, of getting them on. Um, that would have been... You're right, that probably would have been better for Exodus than Exodus. I mean, granted, I would have swapped Anthrax for Exodus any day, but, um, you know, that's just my correct opinion. But, uh, you know, I think that uh, even a band... Because they, they, they've they tried to do, like, big four tours before, but they could never get Metallica on, <laughs> you know, for it. And so what you would have is you would have, like, you know, you'd have Slayer, you'd have Anthrax, um, even, even Megadeth. And Testament. then you'd have, to, you'd have to throw... Yeah, you'd have to throw Testament or you'd have to throw Exodus on there. And those bands, unfortunately... Um, Testament, Testament definitely more so than Exodus... But those bands don't have the earning power that, you know, a Megadeth or a Metallica would have. So Lamb of God was probably, 
it, it de they definitely I think stand out the most, but but not really if you think about it. Like, is that, I don't know really how to describe it. It just seemed odd seeing them on there. It would be like it, to me to my eyes, and I know we're talking two different bands, but it, it would almost be like you know an Iron Maiden Saxon you know tour featuring Killswitch Engage. Like it just generally generationally. Or Jenner. So, do you think that the the Judas Priest, or I'm sorry, Iron Maiden and Killswitch tour is weird? I think it's weird. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I don't have a problem with it. Yes, I like both. I, no, I don't like both bands. I mean, I like both bands, but I I don't I don't see it as going like everybody's just there for one or the other. I feel like, and maybe that's just me not giving people enough credit. But you know, I'm sure there were plenty of people that were at the show last night just to see Lamb of God. And their name was John Beatty. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I made no bones about that. I left after yeah. two songs of Slayer. I at least saw them. Well, you saw the whole show then. Uh, I saw Flames. I saw Pentagrams on Fire. I saw Kerry King and his bald head and his shitty solo. And there you Tom, go. You Tom, got Tom, it. That's... Tom Araya not really moving around because he can't. And indiscernible, indiscernible l lyrics. Uh, and a Weedily solo uh, from Gary Holt. And uh, yeah, I think I got the whole whole experience. And you saw Slayer. Yeah, yeah. you're good. Yeah, <laughs> and on that note, uh, we are going to get into our conversation with Chuck Billy of Testament, and uh, we will talk to you at the end. <laughs> We have the pleasure this afternoon of talking to Chuck Billy from Testament. How are you doing today? I'm doing awesome up here in uh, Syracuse, New York. How's the weather out there? It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot and nasty. <laughs> yeah, it's hot where I'm at, too. Um, and I hate to break it to you, but whenever you uh, roll into St. Louis on August 9th, it ain't going to be any any cooler. <laughs> it's... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, it's probably about a hundred and two degrees. Right I now. mean, uh, we started the tour. You know, it's raining. We're on the East Coast, so I thought it was gonna be a summer tour, and we get already like four days of rain. So <laughs> <laughs> I expect anything. Right. So the reason we're talking to you today is because you have a new line of uh, products out with Lord Vapor Pens, uh, including your Chief Signature yeah. Series. Um, why don't you tell us a little yes. bit about how that whole process came to be? Well. Um, Lord Vapor approached me uh, back in 2014 about putting out a vaporizer. And um, it's a local guy that started Lord Vapor from the Bay Area Metalhead. And uh, I went for it and we did very well. You know, that's when kind of like, um, you know, there was nothing legal yet. And uh, since that product, Lord Vapor um, sold the company. And um, the new owner of Lord Vapor approached me because he still wanted to keep the, you know, Chuck Billy Signature Series Chief in there. So he approached me and asked if I was interested, and he wanted to take it a step further and, and expand the line to not just the weed vaporizer, but you know, use oil since a lot of people use cartridge, um, CBD and THC uh, vaporizers now, and also just like a cool and conspicuous uh, weed pipe. So. Uh, I was, I was, first of all, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm totally interested. And, you know, the guys really did a great job. He did his homework. He went to China to look at all the products. And, and the product that we selected as the chief line, it's some great product. Like the weed vaporizer we call the war drum. That one uh, is weed vaporizer and also wax. Yeah. And the improvements of this one was is the last one we had, the mouthpieces, where you loaded the weed uh, seemed to be breaking um, over time. So we improved it and, uh, and now it has a magnetic glass uh, mouthpiece that just pops on and off by magnet. It also comes with a interchangeable battery. So you can actually buy spare batteries and, you know, bring some extra batteries if you're not around power. And uh, it's really inconspicuous. You know, that's, that's the upgrade of the chief vaporizer. And then the second product we have is it's called the um, Dreamcatcher, and that's actually gonna that's a um, 
oil cartridge vaporizer. And, um, you know, you can burn any size cartridges from a quarter gram up to a gram. Um, and the beauty of this one is it, I've charged mine. This is the one I use the most right now. I've charged mine the first day of the tour, which I believe was like the 26th of last month. <laughs> and I still have a charge. I think I had a price charge it today. So it's been lasting a while, but it looks like a Zippo lighter. Mm-hmm. So, you know, after you're using, just pop the cap over the top and throw it in your pocket and it, it protects the cartridge from falling out or coming loose or spilling or breaking in your pocket or wherever you keep it. So that one's that one's my leading favorite right now, and then of course the the tomahawk, which is a cone shaped pipe, and uh, I wish I had a video camera for backstage the other night. It was a little windy, and the guys were trying to smoke a pipe, so I pulled out the tomahawk and and used it, and it worked great in the wind. I'm like, man, this is like perfect commercial right here for advertisement <laughs> for the product, but. You know, usually when you smoke a pipe, you got two hands, one holding the pipe, one holding the lighter. And, you know, it's very obvious what you're doing. Right. With this unit, you, it comes with five little pods in this one device and it's got a built-in lighter. So you just hold it up one hand, click the switch, lights the lighter, and you're off and going. So it's pretty inconspicuous. I was going to say, when reading about that, actually, is, is that something, and forgive maybe my naivety on this, is that something that's kind of been around for a while like sort of like having the the lighter inside the the device itself because when i read that i was like jesus christ that's so ingenious like it's an all-in-one literally you don't need to do anything yeah i haven't i haven't seen anything we i haven't seen that device at all yet but it's something that you know god i mean it's easy concept so yeah but it works great it's i mean it's a cool looking device it just looks like a cone uh, you know a longer cone um very very inconspicuous you know but, you know, and, and the product is, is – it's not novelty stuff. It's actually really works really well, and it's great quality. Um, the vaporizer line, you know, for me, I'm still like to roll up a joint and smoke a joint. Right. But the beauty of the vaporizer for me, like I use it mostly, is like if I go to Warrior game or A's game or Raider game or I go to the movies or I'm on a flight from Europe over 10 hours on a plane – that's when my vaporizers come in very handy, <laughs> you know, because there's no smell, very low key, and, you know, you take a hit, you know. So those are awesome. But, you know, and it is it is for the stoner. But, again, it's also for the novice smoker. My brother, um, his wife passed away about a year and a half ago from cancer. And her whole life, she never smoked weed and kind of always had the taboo that marijuana is illegal. And, you know, she didn't do it. But her doctor had mentioned to her um, that maybe she should try marijuana to help with her appetite. So my brother called me, and and I came over and brought over a chief vaporizer and some weed and showed her how to use it. And it worked because it helped her appetite and helped her eat. And, you know, to me, I was like, that, I, I felt it was such a good feeling that, you know, wow, it this, you know, yeah, it is for stoners and people like to get stoned. But it's more than that because somebody, for medicinal purposes – you know, if you never smoked weed in your life and you just took a hit off a joint, you're going to cough your brains out, and, you know, <laughs> probably not not enjoy it so much, you know, as the right. first time never smoking. So the vaporizer is definitely an easier way to go in. It's less, you know, even though you're getting, it's more beneficial because you're getting more THC through the vaping than you are smoking a joint, but it's less harsh, you know, you don't cough, you don't have this big cloud of smoke and when she did it, she was like, wow, you know, I'm, am I supposed to be feel? what am I supposed to feel like? You know, like, <laughs> it was kind of, it was kind of nice, you know, it was, it was, it was kind of cute. <laughs> yeah. Just relax. Just enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, how many hits am I supposed to take? I'm said, just take enough to all of a sudden you start and feel relaxed, you know, and, and uh, you know, they give it a few minutes and then, you know, you might get the munchies. <laughs> <laughs> You know, something I was kind of wondering, you know, with a lot of bands attaching their their brand or, you know, their image themselves to beers and and liquors and so forth, and just seeing how involved everyone is getting into this, was it the same for you with with this whole process of, you know, designing and and figuring out what you, you wanted? I guess maybe even another way to ask it is, you know, like musicians who get a signature series guitar or bass or drums or whatever, you know, there's the process of like fine tuning all the the minute details of the the instrument you know were, were you that actively involved like oh, yeah. how many ver- how many versions I, of the, the wardrobe were there i 
Uh, well, there was a, a selection of different products. We wanted we wanted to improve what we lacked on the last one, which was the battery. The first generation of vaporizers, batteries really didn't last too long. Sometimes you would get them, and they wouldn't even work out of the gate. So that was a big problem. you ship them out and get people complaining that, oh, the battery didn't even work on it. So we wanted to make this one where it gets interchangeable, and the mouthpieces were breaking. So I really wanted to try to target our problems and address them, and we did, and we solved them. And uh, it definitely makes a much better device. The new war drum is, is it fits perfectly in the palm of your hand. It's very, very inconspicuous. You can't even see it if you just close your fist. But uh, you know, yeah, I, I think it. I think it's really cool. You know, with uh, you know, it definitely being designed for people that are on the move. You know, uh, sort of thing. Yeah. It's in, inconspicuous. And uh, you know, was this? This was definitely something that um, that you were obviously passionate about. Um, you know, how how impressed are you that you know nowadays? That, that something like this isn't going to, you know, you're, you're going to be able to put out something like this and put your full support behind it and it not be like some big taboo issue anymore. Like, is there a certain sense of freedom well, that comes with that? I, I, well, yeah, I mean, I was, a, a, you know, I was one that didn't have the answer because I've been traveling to Europe for over 30 years and those are long flights. And in the old days, you know, you would go in the bathroom, light up a hit off, take one hit off the joint, flush the toilet and blow it down the toilet. I mean, that's how the extremes you'd go to to get in stone, right. you know, where here we are today. You got something where I could probably sit next to the person next to me, take a hit, blow it down, down towards the ground and nobody would ever know, you know. So it, it's, you know, from from my needs, what I had in the past to where we are today and the options that are out there. And, and I think people are a little more you know, responsive and acceptable for marijuana. It's not, doesn't have the bad taboo. It did, you know, 10, 20 years ago, um, especially people and elderly people see it as medicinal, you know, it's, it's come a long way. Speaking of kind of how far the industry itself has come, I, I mean, you know, you just kind of spoke to how it used to be for you as a smoker, you know, 30 years ago, plus going overseas and seeing how the culture is over there, you know, with like Amsterdam and so forth. Have you been surprised oh, yeah. at how much the industry has changed just even in the last 10 years here in the States? Oh, big time. I mean, there's a smoke shop in every city now. I mean, you know, I don't think there's a city in in the U S that doesn't have a smoke shop, you know? So those are popping up everywhere and, and they're just a little more lenient. I mean, I think, you know, I remember before you, you get pulled over and you had a joint in the ashtray, you probably get arrested, you know, and big, big giant ticket or today, you know, depending who the officers and his beliefs, they might just, you know, throw it out and give you a warning and say, you know, you know, it'll slap on the hand, but, it's definitely changed from what it was back then and people trying to be hide, you know, kind of little closet smokers, I guess, you know, and hide from public and be out of the public's eye when you're smoking. It was like, you know, it was almost like in secretive, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And like what you'd said about, you know, the, the stereotype of the stoner, you know, and that, you know, the, the there was always a certain stereotype, especially throughout the nineties, of, you know, stoners mm -hmm. just, be, just being dumb and being, you know, being slow to move and not having a future. not And, um, you know, I feel like in the past, you know, five years or so, you know, the, the lid's kind of been blown off on that. And it's like, first of all, a lot more people smoke than you think do, you know. And we're, we're all productive members of society, you know. <laughs> and uh, that's, uh, I think that's that's why we are looking at, like, you know, legalization in, in certain states and i think eventually you know people people raising awareness and i think uh i think it's cool to have you know like a public figure like yourself to say no this is you know <laughs> let, let let's let's it's make okay. it okay i mean yeah i've watched some tv programs where you know there's families that have children that have seizures and and you know they've been recommended using cbds and stuff like to help with seizures but they can't get it in their state, you know, and they can't go to another state and bring it back across the line because it's illegal. So, you know, you get families that are uprooting their whole family for their children to go to, you know, Colorado or somewhere where they can, where it's legal and they can have access to that and, yeah, you know, have help for their children. So I think, I think it's going to 
it's going to grow and spread, I believe, especially because of that. There's been a lot more people stepping up because of that, not just because they want it legal and we can all get high, but it's for those people that really, really need it for medical reasons, you know, because it does benefit them. And it's proven. Yeah, I think I saw that documentary. It was like a collection of moms that all sort of take turns because their kids have autism, I believe is what it was. Yeah. Yeah, that was a fucking yeah, yeah. crazy documentary. Uh, and just like yeah, the, that, the mom kind of... Yeah, our Sanjay Gupra was like the, was the guy narrating. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't thought about that documentary in a while. That's... Yeah, I should go back and rewatch it. That was really good. Yeah, but those those children, you know, I mean, like I said, they had to uproot their whole family just to you know, get relief for their children just because it's, it's illegal, you know, and, uh, you know, there was a big thing with, uh, you know, Christie in New York, you know, back then, you know, there was families, you know, fighting for it and he just turned it down for New York and, you know, and, and again, because they're afraid thinking that it's bad and evil and it's going to ruin our society and, you know, going to lead to harder drugs and all this shit you know it's like i don't know i don't think so i see i think the new generation now is in a whole different level of taking drugs from pills to cough syrups to whatever (laughs) crazy way kids get high now you know so kind of we're gonna start wrapping up since uh, i know you got to go pretty quickly um you know, where do you see the industry going in the next little bit now that you're kind of an active part of it with, you know, your, your line of vapes and vaporizers and so forth? Well, it's growing. Like I said, I think um, it's all about money at the bottom end of the day with politicians and, and government. So, you know, I think that's that's the only place I think it's going to, you know, get those politicians and those guys probably who never ever even got high in their life to even think about it because money talks and uh, and if they had a heart and seen the children and people even the elderly any anybody who's you know can use marijuana to their benefit you know should they should legalize it i mean it, look at alcohol i mean right you know there's a time that was bad and it still is bad and still ruining people and still destroying lives <laughs> but it's still so and you know it's still as popular as ever so the last two questions I have for you, one is more of a – it's something I thought of uh, a couple of days ago, and uh, it is, it's all in fun, so I hopefully you don't take it the wrong way. But, you know, with uh, vaporizers yeah. having, like, e-juices and so forth, do you ever see yourself coming out with a Tasty Mint uh, vape juice? I don't think so. I, I, don't, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, I would- just with the marijuana, but I, 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 I'm around people all the time that use those vapes and all of all these different flavors. Of course, it smells great, but I just don't know, you know, more about what's in that. Right. Know? It was just one of those where it's, it's good like for I could you or bad for you. Kind of see, you know, potentially going like you're not too far removed from that that industry as well, like the, the actual vapes uh, for like smoking. But then I was like, oh, it'd be an interesting like tie into the band sort of. It's it's a it's a shitty pun, but like I thought of it and just thought it was kind of funny. I was like, you know, I could see it. You know, I've heard of worse things getting greenlit and making lots of money. So it was like, oh, whatever. <laughs> Testaments, tasty right. mint. Yeah. yeah. Um, right. <laughs> and then, kind of like a, a fun last question uh, before I have you plug your socials and so forth. Um, do you have any any fun smoking stories? Like, for, you know, you've been on the road for so long. I'm sure there's you know a fun story maybe that comes to mind of being somewhere or whatever and having a good time. Well, I mean, you know, our first time ever out of the country as Testament, we went to Holland. So that was like our very first kind of like eye opening experience of the culture of like marijuana where it was okay, which, you know, still haven't seen that. Well, I guess it's coming around, but, you know, just and we were still like, I mean, Alex and those guys were like 16, 15, 16 over here. And, you know, we're drinking, smoking (laughs) weed in Europe. And it was just like you know, the freedom that they had over in Europe of, of before America caught on was just incredible to us. And so Holland always was like, 
let's go. Eddie Tour, we did. Okay, we'll call and put it on. <laughs> you know, we're going to Amsterdam. It was, it was like, we always call it like the adult Disneyland because it was just 24 7 and you can drink and smoke and run crazy all night long. So that was always like something that we always had to kind of put in the, uh, on the tour. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, lastly, where can people find you, uh, your vapes, and, uh, the band and well the vaporizer yeah the vaporizer is the pretty easy it's at lordvaporusa.com okay. you know you'll see the chief products and all the products there um yeah testamentlegions.com is our website you can find the product there as well and uh, you can actually probably find it at my chuck fck and billy.com okay well are they i would assume not but these aren't going to be available on the tour currently are they do you guys bring them out with you um, no, because we're limited to what we can sell on the Slayer tour. So okay. I'm not selling it here. So they're, they're just online, but you know, we're working to get them service a lot of like smoke shops around the, the country with the product as well. Awesome. And then the very last question I always like to end these episodes out to a song can be whatever. So what would you like us to play it out to? Why don't we play it to, uh, the greenhouse effect? <laughs> <laughs> I'll practice what you preach. Which, Clever. which yeah. it just so happens to be today's 29th anniversary, released today, 29 years ago. Awesome. Well, Chuck, Billy, thank wow, you very yeah. much for taking the time to uh, do this conversation, and Dan and I will hopefully be seeing you both on our respective dates on the Slayer Tour. Cool, man. We'll see you soon, man. All right. Thank you very All much. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. See ya. Bye. And that was our conversation with Chuck Billy from Testament. Now, I know you might have thought we were going to talk about Testament, the final Slayer tour, but surprise, we talked about weed vaporizers and Chuck Billy's uh, line of vape pens and vaporizers and a lot of other stuff. Um, Sometimes, you know, when these interviews come across, uh, it's not necessarily about what you get to talk about. It's, you know, getting to talk to the person and kind of building that rapport, uh, hoping down the road uh, maybe we will get Chuck back on and we will actually get to talk about Testament. Um, but I mean, I still had fun talking to him about weed and how much weed's changed over the the handful of years. And I mean, there were some cool stories like the Amsterdam story. I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. That was funny. He, he definitely had a lot of good, I mean, like he seemed very excited about it. Whereas like, I think a lot of, a lot of musicians sometimes like they'll put their signature stamp on something, but it's not like, it's, it's always some kind of paid deal or whatever. But like with Chuck Billy, it sounds like he really was involved in this from the ground up and like designed it and like he was really he was really excited about it you know what i mean it wasn't like a it wasn't some kind of canned weird you know business by numbers thing like this dude like gives a shit about his weed vaporizer pens you know well i mean and the other thing too is is you know like he was saying like there are obviously medicinal purposes behind these things and you know like i i love the story about was his uh was it his mom I don't remember if it was his mom or I don't, I'll have to go back and listen to it, but yeah. Um, but you know, the fact that she, she didn't know <laughs> what to do and there was this like dirty stigma, you know, behind it. And, right. and then it was like, Oh, this isn't that bad. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> I like it. What he said, he's like, so that, you know, she, she, she took a quick, uh, a quick hit off of it. And was like, okay, now what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you wait oh, until you get hungry. That's, yeah, that's it. You're good. Yeah, like if you're feeling better, great. If you're not feeling better, take another hit. You know, it's not, <laughs> you know, it's not a, it's not some kind of unnatural. You know, we didn't just inject you with heroin or something. <laughs> you know. Yeah, no, I I thought that was really cool, and, and the whole like you know how how you know like I was saying like the ingenious thing about his uh the the cone is that it it lights itself, and I was like, holy shit, I don't think I've ever seen anything do that, and I don't know if it's proprietary to Lord Vapor Pens at all, but. Yeah. You know, like I could totally envision too, and he's like, oh, you know, everyone's trying to spark one up after the show, and it's windy, and they can't, and then I just offer them up my thing, and there you go. And it's like, shit. People are looking at him like, God damn it, Chuck Billy, why are you so fucking cool? Yeah. <laughs> like, what is this fire stick you have? He's got this amazing self lighting thing. You know, like, it's <laughs> like, damn. But yeah, no, they, it was a cool conversation regardless. I mean, I. Because honestly, if we'd started talking to dude about Testament, I would have the poor guy would have had to hang up on us because I would have just kept going and going and going and going and going, you know. So uh, no, it was it definitely definitely a really cool conversation, and yeah, I'd love to have him back sometime to talk. Yeah, me too. I uh, would love to get him on, and I mean, that's it's kind of the funny thing is, like I said, 
a little bit ago is, you know, sometimes you get interviews and you're just kind of like, ah, I wish I could get the person to talk about something different, but, uh, you know, you still get to have the conversation. And, and, you know, the nice thing is, is sometimes like maybe you'll do this and, you know, when the time comes to maybe get him back on, you know, he'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember you guys or potentially remember yeah. us or, you know, I know it, we're a dime a dozen. <laughs> but, you know, like it's just one of those things where it's like you never know who will listen. Someone may really enjoy this conversation. Someone might learn something. Uh, you know, you never, someone might hear this and be like, I didn't even know somehow didn't even know Chuck Billy had vaporizers and so forth. And I'm going to go check those out. And, you know, hell, we might have so like the funny thing is, is like the Jared Montague episode I did. Uh, I had a friend reach out to me and they're like, oh, my God, I love the conversation. It sounded so interesting. I bought the book. And I mean, it's one book sale, but someone listened to it and was like, wow, that sounded cool. I want one. Yeah, but Jared's a super nice guy, man. He he probably really appreciated that book sale. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, you know, uh, that that is that is what we do. We try to recommend things that we also like, you know, <laughs> and and get into. Um, I won't talk too much more about that about weed vaporizer pens, but you know, well, it's definitely say, there, there may have been. You may hear me on occasion uh, partaking in the uh, in the green on this on occasion. <laughs> He only does it on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when I have to get through a four-hour conversation. <laughs> right. Well, you know, break, come to class prepared, you know. So uh, it sounds like Chuck Billy's got what you need. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went to the merch area, and I was kind of hoping. I mean, I know he said he doesn't sell any of it, you know, uh, at the at the merch area. But I secretly was hoping I would go, and we would somehow be the only show <laughs> that had any of this shit. Uh, I mean, I will say, too, I was pleasantly surprised. Like, that... that uh, the cone, the uh, the chief, it uh, or I'm sorry, the tomahawk, the cone shaped pipe, it uh, everything was pretty reasonably priced. I mean, I mean, the, the tomahawk yeah. was like fifty bucks, I think, before shipping and handling and so forth. And I think even like the the big, you know, the war drum, I think was only like a hundred and sixty bucks. I mean, if you've ever gone and look at any of that shit, I mean, it's at least that much, if not a little bit more. And you know, it's not, you know, it doesn't come with like a signed photo from Chuck Billy. Right, that's the whole thing. Like for something that's that's that custom and that specialized, you know, you, you would think that the price gouging would be like out of this world, but it's really not. I mean, you go to go anywhere, you're gonna find similar prices, if not higher. Oh, for sure. I'm waiting for. I'm looking forward to maybe a uh, a testament line, though. I think that would be, or even like a a metal a metal pipeline. Right. Well, and that that's kind of what, you know, what he was, I think, trying to do, because he's like, I want to create something for metalheads, because people in the rap world and, you know, other styles of music have, have been jumping on this. But like, there's really nothing out there for metalheads. And it's like, not that they wouldn't be a good demographic for it, you know, so it yeah. makes sense. As I saw some kids smoking, using their vapes, and I saw a couple of people smoking weed at the show last night, I kept thinking to myself, I was like, if only you guys had the, the tomahawk. <laughs> like, man, Chuck could have Chuck could have sold 500 tomahawks at that, uh, oh, for sure. you know, at that show. Yep. Yeah, he'd probably be just swimming in money. If they, I, I don't know if it's like a limited run thing either, but, I mean, I was thinking to myself, it's like, man, if he could have sold that stuff, I'm sure people would have been buying them up. The other thing, too, I was thinking about this today, knowing that we were going to do this conversation. Uh, you know, have you seen those rap snacks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if they were to do a metal version, what what would be, like, your your three? So, like, what would they be, and, like, what, could you come up with a flavor? Oh, man, I don't know if I could come up with a flavor name. Um. So, like, <laughs> Le- <laughs> Lemmy would be, like, a Jack and Coke flavor chips. <laughs> right, right. Um. I don't know, man, for, for metal snacks, I would have to probably go like there. I mean, honestly, I think you need to double down on spiciness, right? Okay. So you're thinking, would you do more like, cause I was even thinking this, could you do metal snacks and have them be chips or should it be like beef jerky? I think beef jerky, but like heavily spiced out. Like, I mean, you can't just be any fucking person. So hotter and than sit hell would be like this. a kiss Paul Stanley version. Something like that. Yeah, don't say that shit out loud, man. They'll put it out tomorrow. You know, They'll sue me. <laughs> they will. They will. And uh, no, like, but it would have to be like super spicy. And like, yeah, the 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 level of spice would have to be like in brutality. So like, you know, <laughs> so like if you start off, if you start off with like, you, let's start off base base level. You've got like ACDC, except those are kind of like your mild. You know, um, you've got your Iron Maiden, which is a little bit smoother. Highway but, you know, to jalapeno. Right, and then you get uh, 
But then, you know, you got to take it all the way down the line. You know, get all the way to your, like, cannibal corpse and shit, and that shit's got, like, a warning on it. You know, like, do not eat this if you have an ulcer or are pregnant or, you know, anything like that. And uh, right. I think I think that, that would be a lot of fun. Now, granted, it sucks, though, for people that like cannibal corpse but don't like spicy food. So, <laughs> you know. Uh, but you know all that all that stuff can be worked out. Don't but most, uh, don't most Cannibal Corpse fans wear like three XL shirts and shit like that? They probably like spicy treats. Well, no, the Cannibal Corpse one though, the entire bag would just be filled with red sauce. So like <laughs> as you're, as you're as you're pulling as you're pulling jerky chunks out of this bread bloody bag, like that's. <laughs> <laughs> that's I'm just saying, man. It's basically what I do to my Taco Bell. I just douse it in sauce, and they're just like, mm, it's, it's fine. Eat it with a fork. Yeah. yeah. It's like a walking taco. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I think uh, that's as good as any spot to uh, wrap up this episode, get to our socials. Uh, if you would like to follow our show sponsor, The Bean Bastard, you can find them on Facebook and Instagram at The Bean Bastard. Buy you some delicious coffee at TheBeanBastard.com. I'm going to go ahead and say pick up the medium roast. That's that's a great everyday blend. Or I guess if you're adventurous and you need that pick-me-up, get the uh, RoboCup. It's the uh, espresso blend. You can find our partners on MoshPitNation.com, and you can find them on Facebook at MoshPitNation West, capital M-I. Twitter and Instagram are simply MoshPitNation. Dan, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at DiscussMetalDan, or you can send me an email at DanAndJoeShow at gmail.com. Um, and you can find my other podcast, Discography Discussion, at discussmetal.com and you can follow the podcast on facebook instagram and youtube at john's entitled podcast tweet at us at john's entitled pod like ice t did today and you can also email us at john's entitled pod at gmail.com and you can also find us on the website john's entitled pod.com dan's also going to tell you about rating reviewing and subscribing before we get out and why it is important we love five-star reviews here on john's entitled podcast and the reason we like five-star reviews is because they make us feel good. But beyond that, we live in a world filled with algorithms and recommendations. Companies create algorithms in order to recommend more products to you, the listener or the consumer. And we want to be recommended. And the only way we can be recommended is if we are rated. So whatever opinion you have about the podcast, if we are your favorite podcast, then please sign on to whatever podcast app you use that you listen to the show on and leave us a review. Positive, negative, negative. Be constructive, be praiseworthy, send us money, whatever you want to do, you do it. Uh, but really, we're just looking for those uh, for those reviews. And John's going to tell you all about Patreon. Yeah, Patreon, we're still kind of new to the whole Patreon game. Uh, you can find us on patreon.com backslash John's Insightful Podcast. Uh, very simple. We have, for a dollar, we will shout you out at the end of every episode uh, for that month. Or, yeah, that sounds good, for that month. And, I like it. Uh, and, uh, you know, like I said last, uh, last week, we are getting some, uh, a new logo designed because uh, I feel like it's weird just having my face for everything, even though there's now another person. And I didn't want to make a two-headed monster. So a uh, new logo is being designed. Uh, we're going to have shirts. And, uh, yeah, just go to Patreon. Help support the podcast. Uh, basically, it's just very simply we are looking to cover our – Hosting costs for the website for for the podcast. Uh, the show will always be free, but any monetary help is greatly appreciated. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so if uh, you know there's a Rock and Pod Expo next year in Tennessee, maybe we could use some of the Patreon funds to uh, to help get us both down there and uh, you know cover all those costs and so forth. And, and maybe potentially next year we'll be hitting some more festivals, so uh, it'd be nice to help you know kind of just cover that kind of stuff. I have a new computer I need to buy because mine's on its on its last legs. I uh, would like to maybe get some uh, some better webcams, so maybe you guys could look at Dan and I looking at each other uh, doing these or something like that. But any any little bit helps, just like the rating, reviewing, subscribing. Every little bit helps this podcast grow. So head on over to patreon.com backslash johnson title podcast and, and donate if you are so inclined and uh we're gonna get out of this episode with a song as you heard chuck billy pick the greenhouse effect by his own band testament uh if you would like to keep up with testament they are currently on the slayer farewell tour and you can find them on facebook at testament instagram chuck f c k n billy chuck fucking billy and you can find testament at testament official you can tweet at chuck billy under the same name chuck f c k n billy and testament is simply at testament as well so we are going to end this episode as we always do with a song and we will talk to you guys next week